Our next story is also about a trip we took to Hannibal, Missouri. But this story is not about where we were going. This is a story about how we got there. We went, thanks to the members of the St. Louis Steam Train Association, who had brought back to life this old steam locomotive, the Frisco 1522. Now you can still see it at the Museum of Transportation, but because of a lot of rules and regulations, it may never get out on the rails again. But if it does, it will likely draw a crowd, as it did for this trip in September of 2000. The passengers started coming to the Amtrak station in downtown St. Louis just after sunrise. For some, this will be a chance to bring back old memories. Others will be seeing for the very first time in their lives the machine they know so well from movies and storybooks. They're heading to Hannibal, Missouri today on a special steam train excursion. The passenger cars are from Amtrak, most of them just like the ones they can take to Chicago or Kansas City any day of the week. But they came today because of the engine. There was a time, of course, when this was nothing special. Anybody who lived near a railroad track or crossed over the downtown rail yards knew the sound and the smoke of the steam engines. But they began to disappear after World War II, replaced by the diesel engines, machines with all the working parts on the inside, functional, modern, yet somehow more impersonal machines. Even after all these years, when we think of railroad, this is what we think of. They've dubbed this train the Hannibal Zephyr in honor of the old Burlington Railroad's sleek stainless steel diesel passenger trains that were first introduced in the 1930s. This steam engine was built back in 1926 as part of the St. Louis-San Francisco Railroad's 1500 series. It was designed to haul both freight and passenger trains and built powerful enough to handle the steep climbs through the Ozarks. The 1522 was retired in the 1950s, but it was saved from the scrap heap when it went to the Transportation Museum, and it sat there for 25 years. In 1985, local train enthusiasts decided to start the project of a lifetime. They wanted to get one of the old steam engines running again, and they picked the Frisco 1522. We just started taking parts off of them. Of course, we didn't go willy-nilly and take one off here and one there. They had a plan. In 1988, after three years and tens of thousands of hours of volunteer work, they fired up the 1522. You know, after working all that time on it, and then to see it actually come out and run, that was probably one of the biggest thrills, I think, that I've ever had. I don't think I ever felt like it was we were biting off more than we could chew. But I, I realized that it was a lot of work, but I, I always thought we could do it. But we had some doggone good people, still do. Doggone good people, and uh, I think our crew can do most anything. That's the way I feel. Today, there is only one scheduled stop, and the train slows down just outside the town of Old Monroe, where the passengers will be treated to one of the highlights of the trip, the run-by. They are allowed to get off the train and line up along the tracks to watch and photograph this locomotive as it runs by.
This is nothing new. Rail buffs have been doing this kind of thing for years, organizing special trips and taking lots of pictures. A lot of times some of these enthusiasts came along for the ride not as passengers, but as chasers, people who drive alongside the train for the best views and best pictures. All the way to Hannibal, a caravan of cars could be seen wherever Highway 79 parallels the tracks. Word of these steam excursions gets around pretty fast in the world of train bus, and some have driven halfway across the country just to see the 1522 in action. This is really the payoff for the crew members. Those who aren't driving the train are enjoying the view now, waving and smiling. But there will be plenty to do up ahead without train shops, spare parts, or even water tanks on this line anymore. The guys who got this train running are the ones who will have to keep it running. Few who watch it go by know what it took to get this train moving. Most of the time, the 1522 sits at the Museum of Transportation as a cold engine. To get it running, you have to heat it up gradually and build up a tremendous amount of steam pressure. First of all, this is the firebox. And in here is where we burn the fire and that heats water to make steam. So all of the combustion takes place right here whereas the work is done up ahead. Just as important as the fuel and the fire and the steam is the grease. Neglecting that could bring a locomotive to a grinding halt. At every hundred miles or so, you have to stop and lubricate the locomotive. Diesels replace steam locomotives because of the labor force that was required to keep these things going. Today, the engineer of the 1522 is Wellington Welly Lazier. Not an old retired railroad man, but a former federal parole officer. He got interested in steam engines as a hobby, little ones at first, and ended up going through the training that made him a full-fledged engineer on a full-sized locomotive. All I can describe is it's quite an experience. I mean, it's, it's a busy place. Uh, uh, you've got, uh, you know, normally somewhere between 1,400 and 1,500 feet of train behind you. Uh, you're pulling about 1,000 tons and you're going 60 miles an hour. It, it's a big mass of equipment uh, going at a pretty fast speed. It's a busy situation. You've got to pay attention to what's going on. Farmer will be sitting here and he's the one who keeps the fire in the firebox that actually keeps the steam pressure up so the engineer can make the train move. I love the steam engine, but it's, it's show business. And uh, when you go through these towns and you've got these folks standing out there, you can see the, the older people, the people that remember these, these locomotives and maybe even some of the folks that ran it at one point in time. Then you see their, their children and then the grandchildren and they're all there to see it go by and they're waving and it's just a really neat experience you've brought a piece of history there that they really enjoy. I enjoy doing that. The trip from Hannibal to St. Louis follows a route between the Mississippi River on one side and towering bluffs on the other. And as the train approaches Clarksville, Missouri, the river and the bluffs draw closer and closer together, with the train tracks squeezing just between. Uh, I start out with trains as a youngster uh, in model railroading and other things. About 14 years ago, one of my buddies in the little train group said, come on out and help us on the 1522. I've been here ever since. Uh, I dearly love it. As my wife says, it keeps me out of the taverns. The 1522 now runs right along the river. 
giving passengers and crew members their best views yet of the Mississippi. This is also a great run along Highway 79 for the chasers. They are up close here with the river providing an impressive backdrop as they head to the next big town. Louisiana, Missouri was founded back in 1818. Nestled into the bluffs and valleys, it developed into a thriving river port and trade center. Its past glory can still be seen in its storefronts and neighborhoods. North of Louisiana, the tracks stay hugging the Mississippi River, but Highway 79 will soon break away on a scenic, winding trip through the bluffs. For the chasers, though, all that matters is that the 1522 will be out of sight and camera range, and they will soon be racing north to get to Hannibal. More rail fans and families are in position awaiting the arrival. Many of them have come to a spot known as Lover's Leap, it overlooks Mark Twain's hometown, the riverfront, the railroad tracks, and today, just by chance, the Delta Queen paddle wheeler, with the calliope providing the background music for the end of the steam train's journey. It must have happened countless times in a previous century, but today it is a rare moment and a treat for the passengers on the train and the riverboat as these great relics of the steam era pass each other once again and give a salute. The Hannibal Zephyr now pulls into town. And the passengers will wander off to shop and have lunch. Visit the boyhood home of Samuel Clemens and explore the town of Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer, and Becky Thatcher. Back at the train, the crew members are getting the 1522 ready for the return trip. Those who rode up with the train joined those who had come up ahead of time and have rolled out a hose from a nearby fire hydrant to the track side. We carry enough oil that we can get from St. Louis all the way up and all the way back. Water, we'll have to stop in Hannibal and replenish our water and do our lubrication servicing. Today, there is nothing they would rather be doing than tending to the 1522, their toy, their baby. To them, this is a machine that lives and breathes, and because of them, survives. This is a piece of history that we've preserved, and I just feel fortunate to uh, you know, be a part of that because it, it just makes you feel so darn good. <laughs> 